All right, guys, what's going on? Quick little video here. I'm going to actually rebuild the Nano Goblin here. Had a reset in midair based off of a possible uh, bad chip or a chip going bad. This one right here, which is the actual flight controller regulator power. And Chang sent me a new board right away. The guy's awesome. And this chip right here looks like it's even different, even though this one was, was already supposedly upgraded and tested. But this one actually has writing on it where this one uh, did not. So currently I am running... This is the whole 5 volt, 5 amp back area where you can run camera, VTX, all your servos. Up here you can run your crossfire in power, GPS in power, VBAT in, VBAT out. So this board technically should not need any PDB, any back or nothing like that at all. Now I know it's best practice to go ahead and use a back to control your servos. Now the kicker is I'm running a Runcam Split Mini on here which pulls a decent amount of amperage and creates a lot of heat itself. Um, so I was, I was running BTX and Split off of VBAT. I was running Crossfire and Servos off of the 5 volt amp, uh, 5 amp back, back here and then I was uh, just running Alpha, this UART, no power, and then GPS had power and everything up here. And I had that problem. Got good ideas for cooling. I'm um, going to be doing some cooling stuff on here and opening up some, some holes. And uh, Ernie from uh, ReadyMade RC, uh, a team, I'm not sure if he's a team pilot or whatever, but he suggested using plastic spoons, which is just a brilliant idea because you cut those in half and boom, you got an awesome duct already. So, uh, to make this easier, I have already went and performed surgery and I have cut the top canopy off and created an exit hole here. I have two exit holes down here for air and that should, combined with some holes up front and up top, get enough airflow going through there. I'm going to make sure that these are pointed at the flight controller. But I really needed to open this up because this is just all a mess right now with like extensions and the crossfire and everything. And I just want to clean everything up. And I only want to do this once. I want to build this thing solid, which is why I'm like, okay, I'm just going to use the back. But in order to keep things beautiful, I would like to not use it. Uh, but I am going to switch out the ESC because it's just a small little... I think it's only like a 10 amp ESC and I've already cut the Beck wires off of it so I can't even use uh, that. So I am going to run a 30, just I've got some 30 amp ESCs around, I'm going to put those in there that way I can shorten all this up and clean this stuff up. Alright so let's take a look at what I have accomplished here so far. As you can see it is a lot more wide open and I will go ahead here and take a look at what's going on I've removed the old flight controller and everything like that so I've got my servo Elevon cables coming out of the sides here I have replaced the ESC with a 30 amp ESC here and then this is the crossfire module and as you can see everything is a lot more wide open and accessible and the wiring should be a lot cleaner. And I've also gone ahead and got to work on preparing the new flight controller. I have the crossfire wired up here and I have some tins, uh, pads tinned and I have my battery incoming lead soldered on here and I have this little voltage regulator which actually will work as a Beck that'll output about one amp um, up to 1.5 amps when it's cooled and this is what I'm going to use 5 volt out and that's what I'm going to use to go ahead and power the servos and then we'll work on everything else 
here uh, throughout the build. So just wanted to give everybody an update here and see what's going on and we'll be right back. So I think this is a good stopping point for this video. I can't really proceed and mount the board and start wiring everything up until I get the VTX. I am going to throw a Unify Pro in here so I have the maximum power that I can get with Smart Audio. It'll be mounted on top, but I need to get to all of the wiring and everything here in the back, and it's just going to be hard to like solder on there correctly when everything gets installed. So I'd rather do as much work as I can outside. So when it gets here and we get everything soldered up, we'll continue with the video and show you guys how we get it all wired up and mounted and go from there. So we'll see you on the next video.